Okay, last class we talked about standard deviations. We talked about a normally distributed curve where we had one standard deviation where 68% of the data was, and then we had two standard deviations where 95% of the data was, and then we had three standard deviations where 99.7% of the data was. Okay, so we're moving on today. We're going to calculate and compare z-scores. What is a z-score? Well, a z-score will tell us how many of these standard deviations that a data value is from the mean. So the mean is the center of the data, the average of the data, and how, how far is a certain x value from that point. So if a z-score is positive, then that data point falls above the mean. And if the z-score is negative, and as you would guess, the data falls below the mean. Okay. So we're going to learn a few new variables. Z is the z-score, not surprising. X is the data value that we're looking for. This little character is called mu, and it is the mean, the average data. This is called sigma, so let's write that out. Sigma. This is this little character is sigma. Sigma is the standard deviation for whatever uh, data we're looking for. So let's look. The best way to look at this is to look at an example. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example of uh, birth weights for newborn baby boys. Here we go. So looking at this, let's look at this. All right. We have everything we need. So, the weights of newborn boys are normally distributed with, with a mean, so that's going to be mu, okay, mu, of 7.5 pounds and a standard deviation, that's our sigma character, and a sigma of 1.25 pounds. So, let's do some calculations. So, here's some people we know. Mrs. Kraft's son, Johnny, weighed 9.125 pounds, that's our X, when he was born. What is Johnny's Z-score? All right, so Z equals, let's look at our formula. We have it up here, okay. Z equals the X that we have minus the mean over sigma, the standard deviation, okay. So let's solve. All right, well, Johnny weighed 9.125 pounds minus the mean. The mean of baby boys is 7.5 divided by the standard deviation, which is 1.25 pounds. All right, so we have a calculator. Pull out your calculator. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to, I'm sure you can see that, 9.125 minus 7.5 See that on the calculator? All right, we're going to get that difference divided by 1.25. All right, so we end up with 1.3 equals 1.3, and that's positive. So Johnny has a z-score of positive 1.3. So that means that his birth weight was 1.3 standard deviations above the mean, okay? Um, okay, so let's do this again. Let's compare it to another score. Mrs. Broccolino's son, Michael, we know it's another friendly name. Michael weighed 8.1 pounds when he was born. What is his z-score? Z equals 8.1 minus mu, which is 7.5 divided by sigma 1.25. See how that works out. Okay, so we have 8.1 minus 7.5, okay, divided by 1.25. 0.48 equals 0.48, approximately 
So that's also positive. So what does that mean? It means that Michael's birth weight was 0.48 standard deviations above the mean. So how do we compare Johnny and Michael? Well, Johnny was far more above the mean. His z-score was higher than Michael's. His birth weight was dif more different. Okay. So he had a higher z-score and Michael was more closer to average. All right, let's do another one. So Mrs. Kraft's nephew, Joey, weighed 1.5 pounds at birth. What was his z-score? Okay, one more time. Z equals eight, excuse me, his, his x, his x is 1.5 minus 7.5 divided by 1.25. Okay, so getting out the calculator again, our best friend here. So we have 1.5 minus 7.5, enter, divided by 1.25. Okay, now this is coming out to negative 4.8. Okay, now let's think about this. This is saying that Joey's birth weight was, is negative 4.8 standard deviations below the mean. Now, so we have to think about this. Are there four standard deviations? No, there are not four standard deviations. So what does that mean for us in real terms? Our question says the weights of newborn boys are normally distributed with a mean of 7.5 pounds. So Joey's birth weight of 1.5 pounds at birth tells us something that Joey must not be in the same category of baby boys who have a mean of 7.5 pounds with a standard deviation of 1.25 because Joey is literally off the chart. And I mean that literally, he is not on this chart because there is no such thing as negative as 4.8 standard deviations. So when we get a data point value that we do not understand, we need to think about what caused this. This, this data does not include babies who, what we, what we might consider is that, this, that these two babies were full term babies, and what about this baby? Did this baby go to full term? Well, in fact, this was not a full-term baby. Not a full-term baby. So um, he was, in fact, a preemie baby. And he is not on this chart of babies with a standard deviation of 1.25. OK, so, but let, and now, so now that was very interesting. We had, to, we want to, be aware of things like that and not just dismiss them. Now, let's going back, whose weight was more unusual between A and B, okay? But between A and B, whose weight was more unusual? Johnny or Michael? Johnny or Michael? Well, what do we think about that? Well, we want to say that Johnny was more unusual, why? Because he was farther from the mean. Okay? And that's our answer. And what you've learned right here is how to calculate a z-score. z is x minus mu over sigma, and that tells you with how far you are from the mean. All right?